We'll cover the two big ones first. These are the guys that do all the work out in the fields. 2013 John Deere 8360R. Bought this one brand new back then. This one's got about all the bells and whistles of the time. So this is when they went to kind of the new nomenclature. So it's a 8R with 360 horsepower. So like you got 8Rs, which is this size of tractor, big row crop tractor. And then you go to the 9Rs, which is the four wheel drive articulated tractor. So this one's got 360 horse, duals all around, ILS on the front. So uh, kind of like your car, independent suspension instead of a straight axle on the front. That is very nice to have. It also has IVT transmission, which has been great in this tractor. Zero issues with that. Love that feature of it. Uh, you got leather or leatherish seats. Uh, the driver's seat is heated. So that's a nice feature as well. Uh, let's see, they went to the 8370 the year after this and full emissions. This is an interim tier four emission, so it does not have def, basically. Three point hitch on the back, which that's what pulls the planter. And then the hitch there pulls the side dress applicator. That's the main two jobs for this tractor. You got five hydraulic remotes on the back and power beyond. And a couple returns there. Planner uses a lot of that stuff. Several electrical hookups there. Can take a look in the cab here. It's 10 degrees today and these big tractors are sitting out here. They're not plugged in. I may try to start it, but I don't have a lot of faith. 100% at least it'll start. But this one usually starts pretty good. We can give it a try. No guarantees, but we can try it. Okay, <laughs> I'm not gonna crank that one anymore, but we can fire up the screen here. While we're doing that, we can go through the armrest. You got the IVT, you can set a forward speed and another forward speed. It's nice, idles down on the road. Um, running the planter and the side dress bar doesn't take full RPM, so it saves you fuel that way. Reverse, neutral park three point controls and then one two three four five hydraulics here is your resume button for your auto steer pto that hvac and everything over here which also doubles up on the screen and if this will focus 2381 hours this one's pretty low hours the john deere dealer would like to have it but we are not ready to trade it yet Shut the batteries back off here. Shut off switch back there. This is about one of the last tractors sold under Howard and Sons before it became Greenmark, merging with a whole bunch of other dealerships. Rock basket we made up on the front of this tractor. So step you find it in the field, toss it in there, rocks or otherwise, trash, whatever. So the A360, low hours. We're gonna keep it low hours, thanks to this tractor we bought about a year ago, the 9420R, so a 9R with 420 horsepower. That's got row crop tires. They're actually, they're 480s, same as the rear duals on this one. So I could side dress, drive between the corn rows with this one if I wanted to. So how does this keep hours off of this tractor? Let's talk about that. So the 9320 we had, nice tractor, no problems with it. It was pretty low hours too, but there was a lot of things it couldn't do, especially as we switched to no-till. Didn't have a three-point hitch like this one, couldn't run the grain cart, because it didn't have a PTO, which this one has. So here the 360 was doing all the planting, all the side dressing, and all the grain cart work. And this one is now set up with the hitch and rear PTO. It could plant, have to add a wiring harness or two to it. Could plant in a pinch, uh, runs the side dress bar 
And with the PTO, it can run the grain cart, which it did this fall. So the grain cart takes 100 plus hours a year off of this tractor. So it has that much less to work to do from now on. So it's gonna remain low hours for a while. It'll be, be several years before we get to 3000. It probably gets 250 hours a year on it, something like that. And to peel more hours off, if I do any pre-plant nitrogen, I'll do it with this tractor instead of that tractor. And then that way the planter's just on here, ready to go on the day we decide it's time to do that. Rock basket on the front of this one. You guys are always asking me about the rock baskets anytime they show up in a picture. So what this is, this came from the 9320. We bought this at an auction. So this is actually the framework for a couple of stainless steel Kim Farm chemical tanks. And gosh, we got it for, I can't remember. It's either 450 or 750 dollars, but we got the frame and the two stainless steel tanks. So pop the tanks off, use some pipe and rod we had laying around, made a couple baskets for either side, and you throw a bunch of rocks in there. Nice feature of the 9R is you can see it sits quite a bit taller than the 8R, so that makes it nice for looking into trucks and stuff with the grain cart. We can get up in the cab. I might try to start it, but uh, if the other one didn't really want to crank on this cold day, I don't know that the bigger displacement motor is going to want to crank either. <laughs> Could be wrong. Uh, crank's good, but uh, it's pretty cold. It's not plugged in either, so we'll not kill the batteries. This one's got the bigger Gen 4 screen on the armrest. Got controls down here for the screen. You can see my little X button is broken here. Turn knob still works, but the X is broken. Deer Tech was out working on it one time. I asked him about that. He called me back, said, I cannot get that button. There's no part for it, but you can buy this whole thing for like $560 to fix your button. So I haven't fixed the button. So similar to the 8R, you've got your three point and one, two, three, four hydraulic controls. There's again, your resume for your auto track right there. Here's your throttle and no IVTs in the 9R tractors as of yet. So this is a power shift, the, what is it? E18. So it ha it's kind of, Got a few more features than a normal power shift that can operate IVT-ish in automatic mode. So it'll it'll shift itself. Uh, you don't have to flick through all the gears. So that's kind of a nice feature. Still uh, getting used to that because I haven't spent a lot of hours in here, but uh, it's nice to use. The cab is pretty much like the ADAR, other than it has cloth seats. No big deal there. Uh, pretty much the same layout as the other tractor. Raccoons have been in a tool shed. Oh, we got another light bulb out. That means we can upgrade to another LED like its neighbor. Now that we got the two big ones out of the way, let's look at the two that do the rest of the stuff on the farm. One of them's not even green. 1999 John Deere 7410. 6.8 liter, 105 horse. See there's some snow on the grader blade back there, just moving some snow with it this morning. Then a good little kind of utility tractor for us. Got some new front tires, I think, last year. What this thing does for us is run some augers to load grain trucks, uh, obviously uh, loader work, picking stuff up, shoving stuff around. Use it to mow roadside ditches. We got a John Deere disc mower that goes on the back of there. About 4,500 hours on it. Uh, doesn't do any tillage work or anything like that. Just does um, loader PTO and, you know, a three-point blade and mower attachment is its main duties. Pick this up at an auction to replace our 4630 that was having a lot of repair bills. Got it down from a uh, dairy. Uh, I think it was a dairy. Dairy or beef cattle, I don't remember. Down by Muncie, Indiana, a couple things about it. 
has this uh, kind of address plate on the fender there. And if you could see the roof, there's an orange circle painted on top of it. And I've had a couple of people tell me that's for maybe ID reasons, if it would ever get stolen. And step inside here, start it up. Put a new strut on the door a while ago, so it actually stays open. Back windows too, they were kind of not that great. So we'll start it up here. Put the dash light up. There we go. Let's see the hours. About 4,500 hours there, almost 4,600. Transmission here, so you got two levers, so you got one, two, three, four forward gears and all four ranges, A, B, C, D. Uh, same for reverse, except we lock it out and really just use the first two. So you control for the three point up and down. And again, got the blade on the back of it right now was pushing some snow. Now for the one yellow thing in the stable, we have a 1997 JCB 214 Series 2 backhoe uh, with loader bucket with a grapple that we added. Now this is not our favorite story to tell. I don't think I have told it on social media. This tractor was upside down in the bottom of a ravine for two days. several years ago, uh, 2017. So four and a half, almost five years ago, had a little incident with this, went a little too far over the edge, pushing some stuff around down in the ravine, upside down, didn't actually hit the ground, was kind of hung up in trees and stuff. I mean, it was completely flipped 180. That's where that little dent in the exhaust pipe comes from. We had to put New glass in the door, maybe two doors. You know, the roof, plastic roof's a little banged up, but um, we're still using it here five years later. Tow truck had cables hooked onto it. Pulled it up out of the ravine, put a gallon of transmission fluid in it, and several attempts to start, it finally started. Puked a bunch of oil out of the exhaust pipe, covered the tractor in oil, drove it, smoked for about a mile and it's been fine ever since. It's got a little turbocharged Perkins in there, Perkins diesel, 97 horsepower, I believe. This has front wheel assist or four wheel drive, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can put it in both automatic or just engage it manually. There's a couple different settings in there. We don't really make use of this feature. It has a side shift on the hoe. So you can see where the, the paint is worn down here. You have kind of these uh, pancakes here. You can release those and slide the hoe left or right. That is for like digging up next to foundations and, and buildings. You can kind of go right up next to them. That's not something we get into, but uh, this happened to have that. So this is the one we ended up with. Why did we get this one? Our previous JCB had the uh, bigger 96 inch bucket on it and those were kind of hard to come up with. So this one also had that bucket. So that's why we got this. It's kind of nice. Um, we haven't used it to move snow yet on this snowstorm, but I like it because the bucket is wider than the wheel track. So you're always cleaning more than you're driving on. You can get in here and check this one out. This one got a new door strut too a while ago. Climb up in here. A few more levers in here than the other one. Here we can talk about the drive system. So you can be in two wheel. That's like your four wheel automatic. Keep it in two wheel or go into four wheel drive. Just kind of, you can lock it in a place in that center position where it normally resides. 
It has this turtle button here, which I use sometimes, mostly on the road. Explains it up here. Basically does takes away some of the hydraulic power, so it's not having to power that. So you have a little more power on the road, or you can slow down your hydraulics if you're doing some delicate work. So all your levers, you got your gear shift here, one, two, three, and four. Control the loader and control the grapple or whatever auxiliary thing you have mounted. Parking brake, and this has, along with the gear shift, shuttle shift, forward and backwards, which is nice when you're doing backhoe and loader type work. Pull the handle on the right side of the seat. The seat spins around. Now we can do backhoe work. So you got your controls for the hoe here. This puts down the stands. They slide down so they uh, give you some stability while you're doing backhoe work. And this has the extendo hoe, or they call it extra dig there on the pedal. So the arm actually gets longer. So you had to actually go down right here in the shop. So we can fire this one up too. It says 4,321 hours. I uh, assume that's right. Maybe we don't really know. Might have rolled over once. That's all the digits on it. So could be 14,000 hours. I doubt it though. So let's see, we could uh, raise our bucket here. And sometimes this kills it. So you can go back here. Another handle I missed is this is a release for lock on a backhoe. You can run your throttle manually here instead of with the pedal. Keep the hydraulics going a little bit when you're sitting still doing work. So we can run the grapple up. down got nice rear tires we replaced both of them a few years ago this one is decent the other front one if we go around is pretty new because I think we had a hole we couldn't repair in it so that one's about brand new on that one got a few road miles on it maybe but we don't use this a whole lot, but it is nice to have when we need it. Can talk briefly about the grapple we got on here. Of course, that's nice for picking up brush and anything like that when you're clearing fence rows or just cleaning up some tree lines or whatever. It makes it easy to move a big pile of stuff. So if this bigger bucket, we couldn't find anybody that made a grapple to fit it. I'm trying to remember, I want to say this was for a, a deer. I don't know, but what we did, it actually ended up being pretty easy to mount this so you can see where we kind of welded and boxed in here so what we did this ear would have been flipped around and kicked out that way the tab there at the bottom where you bolt it on so we put it in the bandsaw and basically just cut the tube at a 45 flipped it over welded it back in place and you can see it contours to the bucket pretty well and fit on there pretty easily. It doesn't clamp down super tight. We used to have a deer grapple on a 7920 deer tractor and it would clamp down real hard and hold about anything. Uh, carried a couple 40 foot trees with that one, no problem. This tractor just doesn't have the power to do that. Why is there no 7920 anymore? So that's pretty good sized tractor. So in today's terms, that'd be like a 7R sized tractor well with what we're doing that tractor had front wheel assist and duels and a loader and the grapple he could do some serious loader work with it but it was too small for any of our implements in the field just wouldn't wouldn't do the jobs we needed it to so it got to be too large for the other jobs like mowing uh, you'd just be in the way of traffic all the time big tractor and duels and the batwing mower uh, too big for auger work because it's just in the way, things like that, and couldn't really do any work in the field for us. So that's when we decided to go kind of that tractor turned into two. So we that's how we upgraded to a little nicer backhoe than the one we had and then just a smaller loader 
tractor and kind of grunt work kind of stuff. So there you go. We got the tractors covered. I'm probably also going to do a video on our trucks, uh, the harvest equipment, and then the implements that these tractors pull around in the fields. Stay tuned for other equipment videos in the future. Hope you enjoyed looking at the tractors. If you got any questions about them, leave a comment.